Hello everyone, welcome, good afternoon guys, welcome to my live, welcome everyone, hello, I'm assuming everyone here is grade 8 or grade 9, let me know down below what grade you're in, hello everyone, comment down below your grade please, and also please let me know, can you hear me clearly, can you see me clearly, sorry to If, you know, everything is good, I'm going to wait for a, few, for a few more people to join. Oh, I'm so tired. My brain is like, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. Where are you guys from? Okay. Grade 9, grade 9, grade 10, grade 12. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my live. I'm Miss Martins. If you're new here, massive welcome to you. I'm very excited to do a live again. Um, did my last live uh, two weeks ago, maybe? A week? two weeks ago. So it's great to see you all again. You can see everything clear. Awesome. Remember, if you've just joined, let me know your grade below. And I'd also like to know if you've been on a live of mine before, or if this is your first time on a live of mine. Reason I'm asking is because I did this a while ago, not that long ago, but I may have gained some new students in the meantime. If you are new, please let me know so I can welcome you. Hello, Christine. Hello, Max. I hope I'm saying everyone's name right. Hello, first time. Letitia, awesome to meet you. Great 10, it's your first time here. Third time, woohoo! Let's go, let's go. Has anyone been to more than three? <laughs> okay, awesome, new. Awesome, I'm so glad to meet all of you. Okay, so my name is Miss Martins. If you're completely new here, and you've never seen me before or seen my videos before, I am a maths and physical sciences teacher. So physical sciences is basically chemistry and physics. For those that are not from South Africa, if you're from America, I don't think anyone's from America. Yeah? Is it like the middle of the night there or something? Maybe you are. Um, but in other countries, it may be broken up into physics and chemistry, physical sciences. Sixth time, yeah. Awesome, King Eddie. I definitely know you, King Eddie. Awesome, guys. So... This live is intended for grade 8 to 9, so if you're not in grade 8 or 9, you're welcome to stay and chat for a little bit while I figure out how your first few days, weeks at school were. Let me know if you have any concerns or queries. This is not a Q&A or anything like that, but I will quickly, quickly respond to a few things. Make sure you follow me if you don't already because it's awesome to meet new students. Share this with your grade 8 to 9 friends. So grade 8 to 9s, the reason why I've put you guys together, maybe the grade 9s are thinking, why are the grade 8s here? And maybe the grade 8s are like, why are we with the grade 9s? Guys, it's because um, the grade 9s, I'm sure you've noticed this already. Let me know if you understand and you agree with what I'm saying. If you're in grade 9, term 1 is quite similar to the things you did in grade 8. Please comment below if you're in grade 9 and you've realized this now and you are realizing that you're doing similar things. Okay, so let me know. Yep, yep. Okay, so let me know as well. If you're in grade 8 or grade 9, what are you doing currently in maths? Let me know what you're currently doing in maths. Yes, it's very similar. Exactly. I'm having a hard time with cubes and squares. Okay, so before we get on with the grade 8 and 9 maths for today's live, I just want to say to the grade 10s, 11s, and 12s, so the grade 10 math students. Hey, miss, we're doing whole numbers and something with factors with the ladder. Yes, that's what I'm going to start with. HCF and LCM, same. I'm also doing that at school at the moment. Let me know what you're doing, just so I can have an idea. I'll probably ask you again. <laughs> factors, okay. So, grade 10 maths, I will be doing a separate live for you guys. Hopefully, it's coming soon. I will be focusing, most likely, we're going to skip the number system, um, although we can briefly go over it um, for grade 10s, and I want to do intro to algebra with you guys as well. But this intro to algebra might be a bit boring if you're in grade 10. However, if you struggled with the basics, basics, basics in grade 8 or 9, which I mean, I don't know if you did, you're welcome to stay. 100% welcome to stay. Inequalities, yes. So you're probably in grade 10, is that right? Rational numbers and irrational numbers. Grade 10, okay. So if you are, hello Jessica, if you are keen for a grade 10 life, please let me know down below. <laughs> That's the one of my students. Hi. <laughs> Please let me know down below if you're interested for a grade 10 live. And grade 10, what are you doing? Then, do I have any science people that are keen for a live? If you're keen for a grade 10, 11, or 12 physical sciences live, let me know. Okay. Grade 8s and grade 9s. Okay, grade 10 live. When you say grade 10, do you mean math 
physical sciences. Let me know. I can do both, but I, I need to fit it in. As you know, guys, back at school, hectic stuff. I know you guys are tired, so I appreciate each and every single one of you for being on this live right now. Okay. I appreciate each and every single of you. Okay, I'm seeing physical sciences and maths. I'm seeing both of them. I'm like, best class clips. It's okay. You're not that late. We haven't started yet. Don't stress. Okay, so grade 10, Euclidean geometry. Oh, wow. We don't start with Euclidean um, at our school. We're doing algebra at the moment. Okay, can you record your lives and post it on YouTube? Yes, before I start, start with the lives, I want to let you guys know that this may or may not be recorded. My lives in the past, some of them were recorded, some of them were not. So it really does depend on TikTok. Sometimes it just, I don't know, it doesn't. I was always bad in maths in school. Oh, it doesn't matter. Not everyone is good at maths. All right, so grade eights and grade nines, if you're not, yeah, Euclidean geometry is woo, next level stuff, but it's fine. Okay, any maths lits. I unfortunately do not teach maths lits, um, but yeah, I can always try and help you guys out. Okay, awesome. I'm recording though. Okay. Now, guys, if you're not in grade eight or grade nine, you're welcome to stay. More than welcome to stay. Maybe you enjoy chatting to everyone and that's awesome. I love it. Um, but we're going to be focusing on, on grade eight and grade nine maths. And guys, now I want to start off by saying this. Some of you, this may be boring. I hope not. But for some of you, you might be, hmm, what's going on here? Hmm. Like, I did this. This is easy. I am going to try and make the lesson both easy examples and more complicated examples. So I need to explain the basics because some people say to me, ma'am, I have no idea what you're talking about when you're talking about simplifying with um, algebraic, you know, the exponent laws. No idea. Some people know what they're doing and they want a little bit more complicated examples. It's very difficult in a 45 minute live to try and cover everything, but I'm going to try my best. All right. So... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you guys there's three things that I've prepared for today's live for grade eight to nine maths. I want you guys to tell me what you would like me to start with or what you would like me to focus on. I'd like to go through everything, but we're only going to be here for about 40 minutes. We don't want to stay here forever because I know you guys also have things to do. You want to relax after school. I already appreciate you so much for being here. I think it's awesome and I love the dedication. So now's the time where you're going to share the video with your grade eight to nine friends. Share it with your grade 8 to 9 friends. Maybe they don't know me. Maybe they don't, I don't know. Maybe they're not here, right? So just share with your friends. Okay. And also follow me if you're new, because now you're my student, just by the way. Okay, so number one, factors, multiples, highest common factors, lowest common multiple. Okay, that's the first thing. And the reason why I'd like to do that is because most schools for grade eight and nine are busy with that. So that's number one. Number two, we've got ratios. The reason why I'm telling you about ratios, I see someone asking me conversion of recurring decimals. So I will do that, but I will focus on that in a grade 10 live, okay? I can do that in a grade 10 live. But what we can do is I can do ratios. Ratios is coming next. Real numbers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. So what do you mean by that? Do you, are you in grade nine or are you in grade 10? Okay, so that's number two, ratios. So that's simplifying ratios, dividing into ratios, finding the unknown number, that's number two. Number three is introduction to algebra. Now, guys, I know that for some of you, algebra you haven't started yet. Maybe you'll start it towards the end of term one, maybe term two, but... Algebra is important. Algebra is important. And if you're in grade nine and you miss the basics, you're going to struggle this year. I'm not saying you're going to. It might be a struggle this year. Grade eights, you don't know about much about algebra. So let me know. Oh, there goes my phone. Let me know what you would like me to start with. Okay, let's start with, I think I see Max, you're saying one, three, and two. I like that idea. Sorry, I'm just taking my phone off of its stand. I like that idea because we're currently doing one. So let me say it again. One is highest common factor, lowest common multiple, um, prime factors, all that stuff. So how to find the highest common factor, how to find the lowest common multiple. Number two is ratios. That's coming up next. After ratios is rates. Okay. And then I've got intro to algebra. Yes, I know one's easy, but for some people they do struggle. So that's why I'm checking. We'll go through it like this. Okay. Let's do it. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip you guys over. As you are watching, you can, you more than something. Hello. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I need the same energy like yours. You I'm need the same energy. Yay. Yo, what grade are you in? That was absolutely a mistake. My apologies about, for that one. But it was great to meet you. I'm glad you like my energy. I do grade seven. I'm not teaching grade seven this year. I'm teaching at a high school. But I mean, I've tutored grade seven in the past. Sorry about clicking on that, guys. <laughs> at least we all got a laugh. Okay, so these are the topics. I'm going to start with topic one. Now, in the previous live, if you were here, who was on my previous grade eight and nine live? Okay. We're still on factors as well. That's why I'm starting here. I told you guys about factors and multiples. So I'm not going to go over that again. But if you do want to screenshot it, more than welcome to screenshot it when you, when and if you want. Okay. Prime factors are numbers that only have two factors, one in itself. We did this in our previous live. Then I did a TikTok video on this. So you may or may not have seen it. Writing a number as a product of its prime factors. So what, how can we write a number of a product as a product of its prime factors? I know best car, clip, car clips, you missed it. So how we write a number as a product of its prime factors is we either use a factor tree or a factor ladder. This is how we want you to do it, especially in grade eight to nine. However, we can check using our calculator. Who saw my TikTok video on how to do this using your calculator? I showed a video of using the Casio calculator to do this exact thing. Did anyone see that video? I really hope so because did you see it? Yay. Awesome. If you didn't see it, I will show you. Did anyone not see it? I'm assuming that you guys that are here with me are my dedicated students. So I love you all. Thank you so much for being so awesome. So I think most of you would have seen it. Do you do for grade 10? I do for grade 10. I haven't set another date yet. I've done one already for grade 10. So I will be seeing, I will be setting another one for grade 10. So just remember to follow me. I'll definitely post when the grade 10 live will be. Okay. We did this in the previous live as well. So this should be something that is familiar to you. Who uses a factor tree? Who uses a factor ladder? Let me know grade eights and nines. If there's grade tens in here, you guys are going to be like, oh, what is this? This is old stuff. I'm sorry. I will do a grade 10 live. Okay. So remember, share the video if you're new here and you want your friends to do well in mass. I, I think we all want to. Factor ladder. Factor ladder. Does anyone do the factor tree? Use tree. Oh, Max, me too. Tree is kind of easy. Okay, ladder. Okay, doesn't matter. They give you the same answer. This is how you do it using your calculator. So say I want to do, I think I even did this example in my video. Let's do a different example. Let's, okay, let's do 60. I think I did 60. 60. If I want to find 60 as a product of its prime factors using my calculator, you type in the number, you press equals, you press shift, and you press fact. And there it is. If you want me to do that again, let me know. I will repeat it. So how would I do this? I'm working up to highest common factor and lowest common multiple. Ladder is easier. Yeah, it definitely depends. Okay, so write the following numbers as products of their prime factors. When you see this, your brain needs to switch over into factor ladder mode. Please do it again. Okay, so I'll show you with this number, for example. Please repeat. Okay, sorry, it was a bit fast. It's just because I've done this in the previous live. So I thought maybe you've seen it already, but I will definitely repeat. So write the following numbers as products of their prime factors. Oh, before I go any further, grade eights and nines and whoever else is on here and who's listening to me, this has happened before. I don't think it's going to happen today because, you know, new week, positive vibes. If the live cuts out, but for any reason, it's just an internet issue, I will be back. Okay, I will be back. It should be fine. It should be fine. You're in grade seven doing this. That's perfect. So this is technically for grade sevens as well. So if you're in grade seven, hello. Okay, write numbers as a part of their prime factors. So you need to use a factor tree or a factor ladder. I can also show you. 
There are different types of Casios now. I know, I think I've got an older version, but all of them, all of the newer versions can do it. So if you want to do 225, just watch carefully. And grade sevens, I'm showing you something that you're not supposed to use because you guys aren't allowed calculators. In grade eight, you're allowed calculators, but you can use it to check your answer. You still have to use a factor tree or a factor ladder. So you go 225, then you press equals. Then you press shift and then you press facts. Okay, that's it. So you press the number. Let's do another one, 315. 315 equals shift and then facts. It's that button over there. Facts, that one. There we go. Okay, cool. Everyone okay with that? So if you have to do it in grade eight or grade nine and they ask you to do a tree or a ladder, I use a tree, but a ladder is perfect. A ladder is perfect. So this is how you would do it. You always start with the smallest prime number. But what is the smallest prime number, guys? What is the smallest prime number? Is three the smallest prime number? No, two is the smallest prime number. The number two. But can two go into 225? No, it cannot. So then we go with the next smallest prime number. Exactly. Well done, guys. Then three goes into 225, 75 times. Then you start again with the smallest prime number, which is not two. Two can't go in there, so you do three. Three goes in there 25 times. Then two can't go in there. Three can't go in there. Five can go in there five times. If you do a ladder, you'll get the exact same answer. The reason why I write three squared times five squared is because there's two threes and two fives. Awesome. Hello, everyone. If you're not in grade eight or grade nine and you just want to join us, you're more than welcome to. How would I write this answer, everyone? I mean, maybe this is so easy for you that you're bored out of your skull. Must I do the ladder? Okay. I'll do the ladder for the first one. So how does the ladder work? Same way. You go like this. 225. Then you say two can't go in there, but three can. Three can go in there. Okay. How many times does three go into 225? It goes in 75 times. If you don't believe me, check with your calculator. They'll say in the exam, use a factor ladder, use a factor tree, don't use your calculator. But they're not going to know if you use 225 divided by 3 and you get 75. You, you're still using the factor tree or the factor ladder. You can use your calculator to help you. Now, 2 can't go in there, but 3 can go in there. How many times does 3 go into 75? 25 times. Then... Three can't go in there, but five can go in there. How many times can five go in there? Five times. Now, what's the prime number that goes in there? How did you do in matric? What were your results? <laughs> oh, I'm just seeing numbers, numbers, numbers in that question. Sure. Um, I matriculated a while ago, guys. But I, I did well. <laughs> I was an academic. Okay. So, how many times does five go into five? Once. These are your prime factors. So it's three times three times five times five. Beautiful, guys. Here's another one. Oh, that's the one we just did. Sorry. Here's the next number. Okay. My question was, write these numbers as products of their prime factors. All of them. So we did 225. There's 315. How do I finish this off? I, I did it. I started it. Two can go in there, so three goes in there. It goes in 105 times, and so you go on. Or you do, you must have do it in the calculator, okay. 315 equals shift fact. There we go, guys. Three to the power of two times five times seven. Does that make sense? Yes. Three to the power of two times five times seven. Okay, beautiful. Last one, everyone. 495. So I'm going to do this quickly, but I hope you can follow me. Can 2 go into 495? No, it cannot. What's the next smallest prime number that can go into 495? 3. How many times does 3 go into 495? 165 times. Okay. Can 3 go in there? Can 3 go into 165? Yes, it can. How many times? 55. Why am I doing three? Because I've already tried two and two doesn't work. So you move on to the next one. What can go into 55? Can three go into 55? No. 
five is the next biggest prime number that can go into 55. It goes in 11 times. Now, guys, we stop there. How do I know that I need to stop? because, finish my sentence, how do I know I need to stop there? I know I need to stop there because this, 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 and this are all, what am I going to say, guys? I think the comments are a bit delayed. That's okay. These are all prime factors. So you go 495 equals 3 to the power of 2 times 5 times 11. There we go. Well done, guys. Look at you. Big brains. Okay, now, what I'm going to do now is the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. Now, you guys need to let me know if you've seen these rules for highest common factor. First of all, what is a highest common factor? Well, it's in the name. Highest means biggest. Common means they both have it. Common means they both have it, right? And factor is a number that can divide into another without a remainder. So have you seen these rules yet? If you've done this at school, if you've done this at school, have you seen this? Because this is how we do it where I teach. And I know I did this with my grade eights and my grade nines. I've been doing it with them in the past few days. Let me know if anyone has seen this. And if you've just joined, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you're part of our life and Technically a student of mine now. Did you know that? All my followers are my students. Okay, let's do this. So before I go on with that, I need you guys to understand is what I need you to understand is a higher, the highest common factor. If I look at this, I'm going to block that out now and I'm going to block that out now. I hope you can see that. Okay, the highest common factor is if I list the factors, here it's 18 and 30. If I list the factors of 18 and I list the factors of 30, the highest common factor will be, what's the highest common factor for 18 and 30? Let me know, guys. What is the highest common factor for 18 and 30? Can you see it? It's a bit blurry. Let me lift it for you. Six. Yes. Six. Well done. I can do this using a different method. I don't have to list them out. This is grade eight and nine maths. Okay. So what I can do... And what I need you to be able to do, and some of you can definitely do this. When will I do for grade seven? You actually can learn this in grade seven. You can learn this in grade seven. I had a grade eight today tell me, if two grade eights actually, told me that they did this in grade seven. Okay. Anyway, so highest common factor. So step one, write the numbers as products of their prime factors. Step two, use only the common bases. And step three, use the lowest powers. Now, grade eights and grade nines, it's not going to help me to say common bases and lowest powers if you don't know what a base and a power is. You did this in grade five. Oh, that's awesome. If you look at this, this is the base. This is the base. That is the base. This is the exponent or the power. You need to know that. Exponent or the power. That is the base, that is the exponent or the power. So basically what you need to be able to do is you need to memorize these rules. This is to find the highest common factor. So let's do an example. If I want to find the highest common factor of these three numbers, you should recognize these three numbers. Those are the numbers that we just did the factor tree for. Step one says write numbers as products of prime factors. If you did this, let me know, comment below or send me likes or something so I know how many of you know what's going on or comment. Let me know if you have no idea what's going on. So the first step is write numbers as products of prime factors. I've done that. Step two is use only common bases. Guys, if you have something in common with someone, it means you, you both have it. You share it. So which are the common bases for these three numbers? What are the common bases for these three numbers? Which one are common bases? So you need to look at all three of your products of prime factors. Yes, the common bases are three and five. Well done. I know this is easy for some of you. I know this is easy for some of you. But remember, we're at the begin beginning of the term. We're taking it easy for now. We will take it up a level in lives to come, but this is easy work. Then the next step says lowest powers. So what you need to do is you need to look at all the threes. The lowest power 
for the threes is three to the power of two. The lowest powers for the fives, just check it out. This is five to the power of two. Which grade is this? So this is basically grade seven to grade nine. Okay. Um, you do this in grade seven as well, some schools. Okay, so which is the lowest power for the fives? It's either five to the power of two or five to the power of one. Did you guys know that there's an invisible one over there? This is five to the power of, we need to find the lowest powers, five to the power of one. What is three squared? Three squared is nine. What's nine times five? Forty-five. Please comment if you understand or if you are lost. I, I appreciate honesty more than anything in the world. So if you are, if you are a bit lost, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. And by the way, because you guys are now my students, you need to understand. <laughs> I left you in the ocean. Okay. If you're my, if you're my students, you need to understand that we never judge anyone else ever. So please take that with you to class when you go to class tomorrow or whatever. You don't understand anyone. <laughs> don't understand anyone. You never ju judge anyone. Sorry. I was reading um, your comments. So I'm fast. I know I'm fast. The reason I'm fast is because I think some people are bored because they've done this. But listen. listen guys, if you're bored, I'm, I don't want to say bored, but if you are, if this makes sense to you and you understand what's going on, I'm so proud of you. But remember, I'm trying to help people that don't understand. So let's go over it again. Okay. For the people that are very lost. So these are the steps, right? I'm going to repeat. I'll repeat a bit slow. Don't make sense. Please go slow. Of course I will. Okay. Let's do this again. I'm going slowly. All right. Highest common factor. Now, guys, write numbers as products of their prime factors. That's the first step. Do you guys know the grade seven way to find the highest common factor of these numbers? Do you know the grade seven way? So how would you go, how would you find the highest common factor of these three numbers? You would list the factors of that one, that one, and that one. You would list the factors and then you would see which one is the biggest that they have in common. Which one is the biggest that they have in common? Okay. These are the grade, this is, I call it the grade eight and the grade nine method. These are the steps. So step one, write numbers as products of prime factors. That is that step over there. How did I do this? How did I do this? I use a factor tree, a factor ladder, or my calculator. So the people that I left in the ocean and I lost, I hope I'm picking you up now. Let me know if you understand up to this point what's happening. Do you understand up to this point right now? So people that I left, I left behind, I'm picking you up, I'm on my boat, I'm fetching you. Do you understand that this is step one? So you type in 225 equals, shift fact, you get that answer. You do the same for that, you do the same for that. So you go, 225 equals shift fact. That is that answer. You go 315 equals shift fact that is that answer. And you do it for that one as well. All right. That's step one done. If you don't know how to do that, then you need to, if, if I end up uploading this live, you just need to go back and re go or go watch my video that I posted on how to do it using your calculator or how to do it using the factor tree or the factor ladder. Are we going to use calculators in the exam? So grade eights and grade nines, you are allowed calculators in the exams. However, the question might say that you need to do this using a factor tree or a factor ladder. If that's the case, you'll just do one of these for each of these. So this, 315, there's the answer. There's the answer for 315. See, over there. Okay, then step two is use common bases. So what does, I'll go over why, why is two by the power of three equal to nine. I'll do that in a second. Use only common bases. So what you do is you look at these three over here. You look at these three over here and you say, okay, what do they all have that's the same? They have a three, a three, and a three. They all have three. So I need to include three. They all have a five. So I need to include five. Do they all have a seven? No. Do they all have an 11? No. So the common ones are three and five. Now with the powers, use the lowest 
powers. Use the lowest powers. Okay, so lowest powers. So the smallest powers. So if you compare the threes, which power? Power is the little number. Which power is the smallest? Two. So it's three to the power of two. Okay. If you compare the fives, which, which power is the smallest? Two or one? Remember, if there's nothing there, it's a one. One is the smallest. Three to the power of two times five is 45. Why? How did I know that, guys? Three to the power of two. Let me draw an arrow. What does three to the power of two mean? Three to the power of two means three times three. It means three is multiplied by itself twice. If I had, for example, three to the power of four, what does that mean? That means three times three times three times three. It means three multiplied by itself four times. Okay. Or you can just type this in on your calculator. Let me show you. Three to the power of two times five. So three to the power of two times five. There we go, 45. Okay, so all the people that I lost, do you understand now? Are you following me? Okay, let me know if you're now following me because I hope so. So the highest common factor of all three of those numbers is 45. Please let me know if you now understand. Then I'm going to move on to LCM. Ma'am, grade 11 lessons. So do you mean grade 11 maths or grade 11 physical sciences? I'm not teaching grade 11 maths this year, so I won't be doing any grade 11 lessons. Okay. Awesome. So please let me know if you're now following me. Yes. Okay. Yay. Okay. So I, I, I managed to save you guys. Okay. Awesome. This is lowest common multiple. But can you write the whole answer in full? What do you mean the whole answer? Oh, do you mean, um, do you mean the factor ladders for these parts? Is that what you mean? So grade 11 physical science. Yes, I will be doing a grade 11 physical sciences lesson probably next week. I'm probably going to do Newton's laws. So I'm waiting for all the schools to do Newton's laws before I do a grade 11 physical sciences lesson. So I want to do it for grade 11s and grade 12s at the same time. Grade 10 physical sciences live will also probably be next week. I'm waiting for you guys to do naming chemical compounds. Okay. Okay, can you explain a little? I just joined the live. Hello, Ava. So we're doing highest common factor and lowest common multiple. Right, so can I try and do lowest common multiple with you guys? Can I do highest com lowest common multiple? We'll do another example. Okay, lowest common multiple LCM. Look at the steps. The steps are very similar. Please do a TikTok doing this. I will. I'll also do a YouTube video. All right. Okay, I don't want to write three to the power of two, but I want to do three to the power of three as an answer. You definitely can. So what you can do is... Instead of writing it like that, you can write three times three times five. That, this, is the same as this. Okay, that and that's the same. Okay, awesome. Let's move on. LCM. I'm bad at LCM. Okay, Max, hopefully we can fix that. Lowest common multiple. So, step one is the same as for highest common factor. Step one is the same. I hope everyone that I've lost, I've now... Um, now you've um, caught up with us and you're with us again because I hate leaving anyone behind. Please do LCM using the ladder. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. So we can do it from the beginning. So lowest common multiple. These are the steps. So if you want to take a screenshot, when will you be doing a life of grade 10 and 11 physics and chemistry? So I will most likely be doing that next week. Maybe not both in the same week, but I'll see how it goes. Please look, keep a look out on my TikTok. Okay. Write numbers as products of their prime factors. Use all the bases. Use highest powers. So do you guys see how this is different to HCF? What were the rules for HCF? Rule one was the same. What was rule two? What was rule two? Rule two was use common bases. That was for HCF. For LCM, it's use all the bases. Do you see how, the, how they're different? Then for LCM... It's used the highest powers. For HCF, it was used the lowest powers. So it's the opposite kind of, basically. Almost. I want to say opposite. It's not the right, exact right word, but more or less. Okay. So let's do an example from the beginning. 
How do I do this? Okay, let's see. Find the LCM of 21, 153, and 119. Now, guys, what does LCM stand for? It stands for lowest common multiple, right? So what I could do is I could take 21 and I could go. I could do this. I could go, okay, cool. It says using prime factors, but if it just said that, oh, no, it's blurry. Sorry. Why is my camera doing this? There we go. Sorry about that. Um, 21, what are, the, what are the multiples of 21? We've got 21, we've got 42, we've got 63, we've got 84, and so on. Those are the multiples, okay? So it doesn't mean what numbers can go into 21. Almost, that's factors. Lowest common multiples is 21 times 1 is 21, 21 times 2 is 42, 21 times 3 is 63, and so on. The multiples of 153 are 153, 306, 459, and so on. 119 is 119, 238, 357, and so on. Now, the lowest common multiple is if I carry on with this list and carry on with this list in this one, and I find the lowest one that they all have in common. That's the grade seven way to do it. Here, again, one more time. This is the way I'm going to show you how to do it now. Okay. When can you do a grade 10 physical sciences live? I'll probably do it next week. I'm just waiting for most schools to get to the same um, point in the curriculum. Okay. So multiples are, if I take the number, so the multiple of 21, 21, 42, 63. So this is 21 times one. This is 21 times two. This is 21 times three. So it's basically when you take a number and you multiply it by a whole number. This is 21 times four and so on. This is 153 times one. This is 153 times two. This is 153 times three. Do you see what I mean? You can carry on and on and on with these lists. All right. Now, this is is how we would find the lowest common multiple. I haven't found it yet, by the way. I'll need to go on. This is how I would find the lowest common multiple using the way that you probably learned in grade five or six or seven, okay? If I want to do it using a little bit of a more advanced method, I'm gonna use prime factors. So guys, what is, what, I'm not teaching grade 12 maths at the moment, yeah? It might change in the future, but this year, not doing grade 12 maths because I'm doing grade 12 physical sciences. Okay. Um, awesome. My YouTube channel is linked in my TikTok bio. All right. What is step one for finding the LCM? I just showed you the steps. It is find the numbers as products of their prime factors. So guys, we can do this using a factor tree or a factor ladder. For example, 21. Is it blurry again? Sorry. Is that a bit better? Is that a bit better, guys? Okay. For example, 21. What's the smallest prime number that can go into 21? It is 3. How many times does it go in? 7 times. Smallest prime number that can go into 7 is 7. How many times? Once. So 21, there's the factor ladder. For 21, it's 3 times 7. Okay, three times seven. I can do that using my calculator to check. 21 equals shift fact, three times seven. All right, you do the same thing with this one and the same thing with this one. I'm not gonna do a factor tree and a factor ladder if only if you guys want me to. Only if you guys want me to do a factor tree or a factor ladder for this one. So I'm gonna use my calculator. Factor line, can you please repeat it? Okay, one more time. So I'm trying to do the prime factors, products of prime factors for 21. So I'll start with 21 and you say, what is the smallest prime number that can divide into 21? And it's three. Three goes into 21 seven times. Then what's the smallest prime factor, prime number that can go into seven? Seven. Seven goes into seven once. So it's three times seven. Okay. And you do that for all of your numbers. So I'm not going to do it for those two, but I'll show you using a calculator. 
Ma'am, can you please teach us how to properly use a calculator after the lesson? I can definitely do a TikTok video on how to, the functions of this calculator. Okay, 153 equals shift fact. There it is for 153. 3 to the power of 2 times 17. 3 to the power of 2 times 17. Okay. When are you doing a grade 11 math lesson? I'll be doing a grade 11 physical sciences lesson. Unfortunately, I'm not doing grade 11 this year. I'm doing grade 8, 9, and 10 maths, 10, 11, and 12 physical sciences. I, can't, I can only do so many classes. Um, I wish I could do everything. Maybe next year. There's not enough time in the day to do everything, unfortunately. Okay, 119. But I'm, I'm always willing to help you guys as much as I can. Okay, so if I can do small TikTok videos and stuff on grade 11 maths, I'll definitely do that. All right. 119, so 119 equals shift fact 7 times 17. Okay, I saw someone already got the answer for the LCM. So these are doing it using the factor tree or the factor ladder method. Show us the ladder method. Okay, quickly, guys. I'll do the ladder method quickly. For 153, I'll do a TikTok video on this, actually. Should I do a TikTok video on it? Okay, let's do let's do 153 quickly, and then I'm gonna do a TikTok video on it for the for the last one. Three goes into 153. How many times? You're gonna have to do your calculations 51 times. I can do it fast. If you can't do it fast, you're gonna have to do it a bit slower. You're gonna have to do on paper. Then three goes into 51 17 times. The smallest prime number that can divide into 17 is 17. Try any other prime number. I promise you it's not going to work. Why? Because 17 is a prime number. So it's 3 times 3 times 17. 3 times 3 times 17. 3 to the power of 2 times 17. Understand? 3 to the power of 2 because there's 2 of them. Okay, so this is the same as this. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Right. I will do a TikTok video on how to do the factor ladder or the factor tree. Okay. Awesome. Now, what's the rules for LCM? You find it as a product of its prime factors. And then what do I do? Then what do I do? Where are my rules? My rules are over here. You use all the bases, one of each, and you use the highest exponents or powers. Okay. I think the comments are coming through a bit slower than because I'm seeing no comments about it. So I know you guys know it. There we go. Okay. Use all the bases and the highest exponents. I do want to do algebra. This is the last one I'm doing on this. So all the bases. What do I mean by that? I've got a three. I've got a seven. And I've got a 17. Those are all the bases. I've got three, seven, and 17. And then I do the highest exponents, the highest powers. So what's the highest exponent for 3? We've got 3 to the power of 1, 3 to the power of 2. So the highest one is 3 to the power of 2. For the 7, I've got 7 and I've got 7. Basically, it's 7 to the power of 1, if you guys didn't know. So this one's going to be 7 to the power of 1. Then 17, 17. How do I work that out? Guys, please, can you be nice to each other in the comments? I know some of you think that this is very easy, but there are some people that don't, that are still struggling. And I think it really makes them upset. Or I don't know, it would make me upset if I didn't know what was going on. And then people were like saying, oh, it's so easy. I'm so glad you think it is easy. I'm really happy for you. I truly am. I mean, that means you're doing so well. And I know you're going to get an 80%. But there are some people that are struggling. Okay. So 3 to the power of 2 times 7 times 17 that is 1071. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, my biggest thing um, is like people just need to respect each other. Okay. That's all that, that matters to me. And everyone is doing things at their own pace. Let's do some algebra, guys. Now, let's do this. Have you guys ever seen something like this? How about I say that for another life? I'm going to say that for another life. Let's do some algebra. I did say this was going to be intro to algebra. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip to my questions. You guys can you guys can tell me very quickly what you think. Let's do this. Some algebra. This is called an expression. What is the difference between an expression and an equation? What is the difference between an expression and an equation? Well, an expression, just to put it simply, 
To put it very simply, an expression is one or more algebraic terms without an equal sign. Sorry, it's going blurry again. Without an equal sign, separated by a plus and a minus. Algebraic equations also have expressions in them, but there's an equal sign, so we're solving. All right, let's carry on. If I have this question, for example, how many terms are in this expression? You guys should know that. How many terms in the, are in this expression? Three terms. How do I know that? Well, because pluses and minuses separate. There we go. Why are people fighting? Come on, guys. Spread love and positivity. Three terms. One, two, three. The pluses and the minuses separate terms. What is the coefficient of x? The coefficient. Coefficient means number in front. The coefficient of x. Now be careful. There's x and there's x. I didn't ask you for the coefficient of x squared. I asked you for the coefficient of x. So the coefficient of x is 4. What is the constant term? The constant term is the one without the variable. Do you see that as a variable? That is a variable. This is the constant term. And you need to put the sign with your answer. So minus 5. Now, have you guys seen this before? It keeps going blurry. Please bear with me. It says evaluate the expression if x is equal to negative 1. What does that mean? Evaluate is basically another word for calculate the expression if x is equal to negative 1. That means I need to take negative 1 and I need to put it in the place of x. So you guys do that quickly while I do it. See if you can get, it, get to an answer before me. Listen, grade 8, grade 8. Big thing to tell you guys, if you're lost, if you're in the ocean, I see someone's there in the ocean, you don't need to stress. This is very, this is an intro, but this is more for the people that have done algebra already. Maybe I'll do a separate life just for grade eights because I don't want to leave anyone in the ocean. So you take X and you put it in the place of two. If I ask you to show me working out, you need to do this. You substitute with brackets. So two brackets, negative one squared. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because this means 2 multiplied by x squared. 2 multiplied by x squared. Okay? So it must be 2 multiplied there by negative 1 squared. So the negative 1 just takes the place of x. Then, the reason why it keeps going blurry is because it's, my camera is focusing on my hands. Then I've got plus 4x. So that's going to be plus 4 brackets negative 1. And then I've got negative 5. Now, how you would do this, guys, is you need to use bod mass. You need to do this first, your brackets first, your exponents first. So what is negative 1 squared? I hope you know that negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is what's negative times a negative? What's a negative times a negative? I see there's different answers in the comments. Negative times negative is positive. 1 times 1 is 1. So negative 1 squared is 1. So I've got 2 times 1, which is 2. That's the first term I've done. Okay? Then, what is 4 multiplied by negative 1? 4 multiplied by negative 1, a positive multiplied by negative, is negative 4. Positive 4 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 4. And then we've got negative 5. Now, guys, last step. Last step. What is 2 minus 4 minus 5? It is negative 7. Did anyone get the answer of negative 7? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm just reading comments quickly. Guys, why are we fighting in the comments? Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. Who got the answer of negative 7? Did anyone get the answer? Yes, well done. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Then, the other thing that I want to talk about. So, this is, this is an expression. It has no equal sign. It has no equal sign. If you're lost, if you're lost and you're in grade 8, I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to worry if you're lost and you're in grade 8. This is going to be difficult for you if you're in grade 8. The last thing that I want to talk about is the difference between these two things. Now, 
for grade eights and grade nine. Sometimes even if you've done this in grade eight, you might be confused. What is the difference here between this side and this side? What is the difference here? So I've got x plus x plus x on the left-hand side. On the right, what do these dots mean? Yes, this one is multiply. So that means x multiplied by x multiplied by x. Now, what you need to understand and what some people don't understand in grade eight and then they get lost is if you're adding variables, it's adding like terms. Think of it as apples. I've got one apple, two apples, three apples. How many apples do I have? Three apples. There's an invisible one in front of these variables over here. So I've got 1x plus 1x plus 1x is 3x. Here, what I do is I'm multiplying. The rule for multiplying, when I do exponents, when I work with algebra, I do have a summary for this. So I'll show you guys a summary. When I multiply, what do I need to do? Each of these have an exponent of 1. When I multiply and the bases are the same, I keep the base and I add the exponents. So if you're in grade eight and I lost you in the previous one, but you can understand this, I'm happy. Do you understand the difference? So for example, what would a plus a plus a plus a be? What would that answer be? And what would this one be? Let's try something different. What's a squared times a to the power four? What would this answer be? This answer would be one, two, three, four a's, four a. Why? Because I'm plussing. This one, I'm multiplying. So it would be, if I multiply and the bases are the same, I keep the base and I add the exponents. a to the power of six. Well done, guys. Two plus four is six. Lovely. Awesome, guys. Then, to end off, or maybe we can see how we go. This is probably going to be the last thing. I'm going to do like terms. So let's do some interesting examples. And if you know this, I'm very proud of you, okay? But there are some people who is commenting negative comments. Guys, there's no place here for negative comments, honestly. I'm actually trying to help people learn. Anyway, let's carry on. How would I do this? Now, first of all, how many terms are here? I have four terms. 2x plus 3y plus x minus y. Okay? What I do is, because there's pluses and minuses in between here, because there's pluses and minuses in between here, we're going to add or subtract the like terms. Now, what I mean by like terms is, you see this one has an x. And then do you see this one has an x? Those go together. If I have two of them and I add one of them, there's a one there, there's an invisible one. I have two of them, I add one of them. I have three of them. That's the X is sorted. With the Y's, I have three of them minus one of them. Three of them minus one of them. There's an invisible one there. So that is, what's three minus one? positive 2y. That's the answer. Okay. What about this one? Which of these are like terms? Guys, if you understand this and this is boring, that's great. But there are some people here that are struggling. So let's be nice to everyone. This is 3ab. Okay. Does 3ab have a friend? 3ab has a friend. 3ab three, three as a friend, and it's negative 2ab. Guys, that minus belongs with that term. That minus belongs with that term. I say to my students when I teach this, 2ac does not have a friend. So why are they friends? Because they have an a and a b, an a and a b. They go together. This one, not the same. So what is 3 minus 2? 1ab plus 2ac. Okay, this is basic algebra, very basic algebra. What about this one? Now be careful, which of these are like terms? Okay, what, which of these are like terms? This is x squared y. Is this the same as this? Are these two the same? What, are these two the same? 
Are they the same? x squared y plus 5xy squared. No, they're not the same because here the x is squared. Here the x is not squared. This one and this one are different. Okay, so does x squared y have any friends? Yes, this is his friend. This is his friend. Why are they friends? Because this one is x squared y. This one is x squared y. Awesome. What about this one? Y, x, y squared, x, y squared. So they go together. So this is how I do like terms. I highlight them like that. So I've got one of them plus two of them. So I've got three x squared y. Is the plus, if the plus or minus is in front of the number, oh, okay, I see you guys are answering each other's questions. So that's three x squared y. And what about this one? These two go together. So I've got five minus one. So I've got four, positive four x y squared. How would I know plus or minus belongs to a term or a number? Very good question. So the pluses or the minuses separate the terms, but they also belong to that term. So what I mean by that is there's three terms here. This one is a positive term. This one is a positive term. And this one is a negative term. So that the sign in front of the term belongs to the term. Okay, there we go. I'm going to leave you guys off with one more difficult one. And I say difficult, grey nines, I don't know if you'll struggle with this. I don't think so. This is something that my, um, my grade eight sometimes struggle with. And that's okay. Try this one. Let's see. I would like you to see if you can do it before I do it with you. So let's do it together once you're done figuring it out. I know it's a bit blurry. Hopefully you can still see it. Oh, no, it keeps going blurry. Okay, let's see. 2a squared b. I'm going to give that a yellow color. So it's a positive term. I know you can't see the positive in front of it. Woo, it keeps going blurry. Okay, there we go. I know you can't see the positive in front of it, but there's an imaginary plus sign over there. Does 2a squared b have anything, any term that's common, that's the same as it, that's like? If you don't understand and you're in grade eight, don't stress. Where were you when I was in high school? I watched this because it actually makes sense to me now. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay, now think carefully. 2a squared b. Now, let me tell you something. The order doesn't matter. So what I mean by that is if I have, let me show you with a different example quickly. If I have 3xy and 4yx, are those like terms? Yes, those are like terms because they both have an X and they both have a Y, an X and a Y. The order doesn't matter. So thinking of that, looking at this again, does 2A squared B have anything that's the same? 2A squared B. So look for one that has A squared and a B. This doesn't have an A squared. That has an A squared, A squared B. So these two, there we go. Those two go together. What about this one? Nope, that's not A squared. Okay, those two go together. Look carefully. This is the same as this. The order's just swapped around. What about this one? Negative 6AB squared. So the A has nothing and the B is squared. Yes, yeah, since it's multiplication, order doesn't matter. Beautiful, Alyssa. What about this one? AB squared. Those are the same. So let's do it. Let's do it. I have two of them minus four of them. Remember the minus belongs to this term. So I have two of them minus four. What is two minus four? Guys, this is integer work. Oh, Midnight Express. Oh, we started like an hour ago. What is two minus four? Two minus four is negative two. So I have negative two a squared b. We don't touch the powers or the exponents because we're doing like terms. What about the green ones? I have negative six plus three. What is negative six plus three? Well, negative six plus three, think of it like this. I owe six rand and then I get three rand. 
How much do I still owe? I still owe three rand. If that doesn't make sense to you, it doesn't matter. It's just negative six plus three. You're going that way on the number line. It's negative three a b squared. That's your final answer. You can't go further because these are not like terms. Okay, screenshot that if you must. That is, I mean, you know, more difficult. My physics term made the entire terms, notes, and works for us. That's awesome. I also did that for my learners. It really does help. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm quickly going to flip the camera to chat to you guys. Okay, how was that? Now listen, if you're in grade 8 and I lost you a bit, I don't want you to stress because I just jumped into algebra. Some of you have never heard of algebra before. Grade nines that are in here, just think about that for a second. Just think about that for a second. Some of these grade eights have arrived at this live and they, they've never done algebra and they followed me today. So well done, grade eights. And for the grade nines, some of you have done this and you might be good at it and it might have been a bit boring, a bit easy, but thank you for spending your time with me and for doing the revision work with me. I hope it just refreshes your brain for when you do algebra and when you do whatever later on. It was great. When will you help us again? I will definitely help you guys again. I don't have a date set this year. But I will 100% do more lives in the future. The next ones coming up will probably be the physical sciences lives. I also want to throw in a grade 10 live over there because I know, well, I mean, at my school, we're doing exponents, algebra exponents. So let me know if you're in grade 10 and you're doing algebra exponents because um, that is something that I want to do in the future. Can you do this more often? I would love to do it more often. Um, my plan actually is to do live lessons but not on this platform. I want to do it on Google Meet or Teams or Zoom or something like that. If you click on the link in my bio, the link in my bio, you can sign up. I'm going to call it online workshops. They're called grade eight to nine online workshops. It's basically this, but not on TikTok. Okay. I will still do a live on TikTok every now and then. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> my hair is very messy. Um, I will still carry on doing lives on TikTok, but in the future, I would like to do more things on, I know the emails are going to go out. The reason I haven't sent the emails yet is because I'm waiting for more people to sign up. Um, what I'm doing is it's going to be free workshops for a while. So I'm doing free trial versions basically. Okay. But I won't stop the TikTok lives. I will still do TikTok lives because I enjoy it. I enjoy chatting to you guys on here. Oh, thank you guys. Okay. Any other questions before I go? If you would like the notes, I can try and scan them and put them in the link that's already in my bio. But just remember to follow me if you're new here, because I'm so glad to have met new people today. I always love meeting you guys. And I do have a YouTube channel. Videos are coming. So yeah. Okay. I will let you know when I go live. I usually post it in my TikTok videos. I put links in my TikTok videos. So that's why I'm saying follow me so you can see when I go live again. And I will do a live on how to use a calculator because I know some of you guys have never used this before. All right. So please remember to follow me, share my videos and, pro and profile with your friends because then we can have more people on the live that I can help. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you have any other questions that you'd like to ask me, you can comment on my TikTok videos. I do try and respond to as many people as I can in the comments. All right. Thanks guys for joining. Have a lovely, lovely afternoon and I will see you again. And it's a pleasure. Bye everyone.